to speak for a few minutes. Thank you. <laughs> can I use, can I use the table? Can I use my mic? Yes. There you go. That's what we need. Really? Okay, my whistle pretty loud anyway. Hold your hand close to your mouth. No, I think you can hear me now, can't you? Then you need Yeah. Go ahead and use my hands. Um, so yeah, my, my job is, um, I'm a London Assembly member, I'm also a Camden councillor in my spare time, but my job in the London Assembly is I'm chair of the Housing Committee and I'm also a Green that represents, I'm elected in the PR, so I represent all of London. And <coughs> one of my sort of two main missions that I've had since I was elected a year and a half, no, nearly two years ago, um, is to try and sort out the complete mess of policies and, and issues there are around estate regeneration. It seems to me like basically every single card was stacked against people on estates doing anything to challenge their landlords and, and did stop big uh, regeneration schemes that were, were demolishing their homes. And they were having horrendous effects. And there didn't seem to be anybody really sort of standing up. So I thought I would do that. And there's been some, there's some amazing campaigners that I've met, some amazing campaigners like on individual estates all across London. Uh, people like Jerry, um, who puts the most amazing amount of detailed research into what he does. He knows so much. Um, and people like Tanya, who I will, um, I'll go through in a minute exactly what impact she's just had on uh, the mayor's policies. Um, I think um, just, it's been really hard to log and you meet so many people who are like, oh, the council are just going to do what they want, what's the point in campaigning? And they feel a bit ground down by it all. But I think in the last few weeks, we've seen some, some genuine victories. Um, that we, I won't go into the details of the, the Haringey development vehicle, but the campaigners there, you know, we, they are, unfairly being characterised as being like a faction of the Labour Party against another faction of the Labour Party, when actually that's an incredibly broad-based grassroots campaign that sprang up out of uh, individuals on estates getting together and thinking, look, we have to, this isn't a done deal, we can stop this. Um, and it's people, you know, it's people of all different parties, you've got Lib Dem opposition councillors, you've got Greens, you've got road Labour councillors that I've been talking to for quite a long time, and then you've got people from the wider community, including like, the Pensioners Forum. You couldn't get a more diverse crowd than the people who are de defeating that. Um, and I think the same goes for um, the people who got together to stop Sadiq Khan's um, estate guidance. Um, so the story of that is um, basically residents... <coughs> On estates that are being demolished should have a ballot before anything happens to their estates. In fact, if you're choosing between options for major changes to a estate of any kind, you should only do that with the, the written permission of residents, and that means a proper ballot. Um, and so people have been talking about that for a while. The new mayor came in and he had a policy that said, um, in very slightly ambiguous terms, um, you know, we won't do any demolition on estates unless residents. Proof, I think it was. I can't remember if residents agree or something like that. Um, implication being, they would get a ballot. So we were quite, you know, pleased about that. We pushed him on it, and we were like, "Where's your, you know, where's this? When are you going to put this into policy?" And he said, "It's going to be a good practice guide to the state regeneration." So we were quite excited about that. Um, and then this came out in December 2016, and this is the mayor's supposedly good practice guide to a state regeneration. It's not. It's a manual for people who want to go out and demolish the states without people's permission, as far as mm -hmm. I'm concerned. Um, and in that, under ballots, mm -hmm. when, when they're talking about ballots, it says, um, this is the, we, don't, we don't think they're necessarily a good idea. Um, they can risk turning a complex set of issues that affects different people in different ways into a simple yes-no decision. Um, and if you're going to talk about demolishing something or not demolishing it, that's a pretty um, binary decision there. So a you know, people's permission is needed. Um, so we were all pretty incensed by this. This seems to be breaking his manifesto pledge. Um, and, and a lot of people mobilised. There were lots of public meetings. Um, Demolition Watch produced a really handy postcard, which was really good. Uh, I got people together in City Hall from different estates. Um, we tried to get people from different um, branches of our various parties to write in. Um, and the consultation document on this didn't even ask about ballots. Um, and then if you look at the consultation report, it's really, really funny because it says... Of the 2,000 people who, who did write in, um, 90, it's under miscellaneous, under the headings, there was no question about it. It says, uh, we put it here, here we go. Yeah. Of the 2,076 responses, um, 1,973 of these supported their mandatory, uh, supported mandatory use of ballots. That's 95% <laughs> of people who responded to the consultation spontaneously saying they wanted ballots. So, 
amidst like a growing quite broad campaign, um, the assembly where I sit, we did a motion in December, I put it alongside a Labour assembly member, and everybody on the assembly voted for it. And that includes the Tories, and includes UKIP as well. Um, that is a cross-party consensus that there should be ballots. Um, and therefore, I think the mayor basically had no choice. So this is the new draft guide, uh, guidance for a state generation, which is basically says if you're going to get mayor's funding, you need to have a ballot, which is like an enormous victory, and a victory for people power. It's one of those things we thought, oh, he's going to try and get out of this, and nobody's going to raise a peep. And, and he, he did. He did the right thing. The thing about this is there is still a further consultation. There's a technical consultation on exactly to how to have the ballots. Um, I think it's equally important that we mobilise and get some of the details in this right. Um, so there's a few things I just want to say. He says it'll, it'll only be for places with 150 homes or above. I think potentially that needs to be lower. Um, he says um, but he's, he's actually not that clear on the point at which you have the ballot either or how much detail there needs to be before you finally sign it off. So that gives scope for having the ballot before the details and then sort of yeah. sneaking bad details in. So I think we need to say that. He does say he wants the ballots conducted, and we all worry that councils aren't going to do ballots right, they're going to do it in a dodgy way. He does say that the electoral reform society should be hired to do the ballots, which is that's top, that's a really good um, thing. Um, and there's also stuff about um, who can vote. And in it, it says that, that private renters on estates, and genuinely, private renters who rent off um, right to buy flats and things like that on estates, they are quite affordable flats. In fact, under like the old Boris Johnson definition of affordable, those are probably affordable homes. Um, they have almost no rights at the moment, and he is only proposing to give them the right to vote in these ballots if they've been on the housing register for the council for more than a year. And it's very difficult to get on the housing register, so I don't think that's fair. So I think we have to make sure that we mobilise and get as many responses into this technical consultation as we can to make sure that the don't have loopholes and are applied in the right way. But I think it is a huge victory, because a ballot, it isn't just this one point in time. If it comes at the end of the process, which is when it should come, when all the details are known, then it means that all the other parts of the process have to be done in good faith. Because if you don't do them in good faith, if you try to fudge it and push something through that people don't want, they have the right to vote against it. It's a really incredibly important bit of um, new policy. So I think that's really good. There's one thing I want to say finally about um, winning, because um, we're here to talk about the Aylesbury and um, you know, making the arguments for um, refurbishment instead of demolition, um, and common sense, and, and all those things that we think ought to prevail, and I think sometimes are at the moment. Um, do not underestimate, as John was saying, how complacent and how ignorant some of the people making these decisions in fact are. Um, there are a lot of people out there who are just, they're just placeholders on councils, they're just there because they, you know, anyone in the, 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 the colour rosette, it's blue in Kensington and Chelsea, it's red in lots, in lots of London, but a lot of these people are not very um, expert at what they do, and they don't have details, and it's, it's you can be, if you're a committed, if you're as committed as, as Jerry, but if you're just a little bit committed, you can uh, quite quickly gain more expertise than them, demolish their arguments, and actually win. Um, so don't feel like um, the people um, in power necessarily deserve to be there. You do have the power to vote them out in their elections, but also you do have the power to defeat them in arguments if you just do a little bit of, of work. Um, I was in um, Notting Hill yesterday speaking at a, a similar meeting here, and they've got lots of issues there, obviously with the Grenfell Tower. Um, they're making a decision there about how they're um, tenant management organisation is going to be run in the future, how their council homes are going to be controlled and um, they're looking at different things to do about making new homes on different bits of land and one of the residents there said, you know, I did, you know, did some work, a couple of weeks research on the internet and, and learned about, you know, the law to do with uh, community land trusts and to do with neighbourhood planning, the fact we've got the right to make our own plans for our area. And I went to talk to my local council about it and, and they, they didn't know any of this. You know, their local councillor had no idea about all these new rules and all these new ways that, that they could be doing things better in their area. They just assumed things had to carry on the way that they always had. And I think that's, that's a real lesson for everybody, that, that we can win. We, we can win things like CPO inquiries. We can win campaigns for ballots for positive things to happen. And, and I'm feeling, yeah, I'm feeling really good at the moment. Yeah. So keep up the good work. <laughs> Okay, um, I'm going to um, 
ask um, for anyone who wants to 